So basically, these two linguists claim, do you know what's NAPLAN? NAPLAN is basically, bas I, I, I can't really remember what exactly it stands for, but it's a national test for literacy, for lit I mean, not just for literacy, but basically uh, um, to test uh, this, the, um, to test the, the level of the academic level, um, levels of our school students, right? So students from schools. I think we started quite early, I think at year, with year three. I think year three students uh, are being tested first, and then they are tested, I don't know, until forever every two years or something. But anyway, so this is a national test. OK, so so basically what they are saying that NAPLAN and the pedagogies of storytelling, there is some sort of tension here in the title they suggest. They said this is not a narrative, this is a narrative, right? So they are saying there is a tension in the way how NAPLAN is con how um, the concept of narrative is conceptualized in pedagogy and in NAPLAN. Let us slowly read this abstract. I made some. Uh, highlights here. I don't know whether for the right reasons or wrong reasons, it doesn't matter. I didn't remove them. I could have removed them, but didn't because you are second language speakers of English. So I helped you a little bit with the analysis of this abstract. However, we remember that the abstract has to have a focus, has to have a problem statement has to have a dialogue, which means uh, something said about the problem and then methodology, which is the development stage, right? So we will be trying to identify all these six stages of the abstract or of the text in this abstract, okay? So we're looking for the six stages of this abstract. So let's let me read the first three sentences here and I will ask you as I read for you to note down for yourself which, whether there is a focus, whether there is a problem and whether there is a dialogue, right? Within the first three sentences, you should find, I mean, these things should be present there or within the four sentences, but three sentences should be enough, but maybe sometimes four, maybe five, we'll see. Right, so uh, sometimes you can actually, you may need more than one sentence to focus the paper. So it doesn't mean the focus is one sentence one, that the problem is sentence two. We saw it in other texts, right? Sometimes we had a problem, say in the advertisement, we had a problem in the third sentence. Sometimes we had a problem in the first sentence. So it depends how the author does it. The problem has to be there. Without the problem, there's no point of writing a text because Pardon me, because every text revolves around the problem, right? Every text revolves around the problem. And that, what you, what you must understand. Secondly, you remember the other principle. In English, the most important information is right at the start, right? So you do not say, uh, these were our findings. You don't say them in the middle of a sentence. You say them right at the start. And you can see that I even indicated it here. That will be a finding, the analysis found, right? So clearly this abstract talks about, about findings because it has this indicator here. And right at the start, the analysis found, a number of students' text, whatever, right? The analysis found. Look at here. We have another one, the analysis also found, right? So these are, so right at the start, we have an indicator here that we are reporting, we are reporting the findings and that's how you do it. The study found, the study also found or the analysis found, the analysis also found. Very clear indicators. So clearly the, the abstract contains 
um, reports on its findings. That's really important. Now, I may not have the time to analyze with you abstracts written. Sometimes when I get to review papers and so on, so there is this. It was very funny. I was uh, examining someone's paper that they submitted for publication, and they said in their abstract they wrote. Uh, Findings will be reported, conclusions will be drawn, and um, and implications for future will be given. <laughs> Give me a break. That's not an abstract. That's the structure of the abstract. You actually, in the abstract, have to say what's the findings, what's the implications. Right? You need to say it, what they are. You can't just say uh, findings will be reported, uh, discussion will be conducted, and implications for future will be uh, provided. That's crazy, right? And the reason why it's crazy or bad, it's because some people, most scholars, most scholars read only the abstract before they decide to read the whole paper, right? That's because there's a lot of articles online, lots of publications. You cannot read every paper. There's not enough life to read every paper. So you really, if if when I check the, the relevance of the paper, obviously I check the title, and then I go to findings, and I check whether the find, I check structurally, because I have my method, right? And then I check whether, uh, so I look for particular, I, I, I look for findings in the place in the abstract where I expect them. And, and then I look at the, ending because I'm expecting where to from here, you know, which is the moral. What's best to do now uh, right at the end and I'm just checking and then I read the whole thing. When I don't find findings reported in the abstract, then then it depends what I do. I may just check the authors. If the authors are famous. Or belong to a particular school, uh, school or line of thought. School doesn't mean a building, it means the line of thinking. And for example, I say, oh, these are the people that I criticize. So not only I criticize them, the abstract is badly written. So I'm just going to report that they can't write. They can't even write an abstract. They consider themselves experts, but they can't even write an abstract, right? So I might do that. I might read it because I think that the names indicate to me the relevance of the paper. But if everything is bad, I'm just going to I might just scroll through the paper very quickly to see that whether it was just the abstract that was badly written and the rest is good. But very often the whole thing just collapses, so I just move on. Right, so abstract is very important. So let's read it together. I will read the three sentence, the first three sentences and you will tell me what. What's the focus if it is there? What's the problem if it is there? And what's the literature review if it is that, which means dialogue stage, whether there is a statement made about the problem. So here we go. For the past eight years, Australian school students in years three, five, seven, and nine have engaged in the National Assessment Program Literacy and Numeracy Writing Test with a one in two chance, so quite a big chance, they will, they, they will be tasked with producing a narrative genre. Right, so clearly once they do the NAPLAN test, it's very likely they will be tested on the genre of the narrative. This paper examines the way in which the very notion of storytelling and narrative is conceptualized in the NAPLAN supporting documentation and its potential negative consequences. The paper begins by providing a review of the literature on storytelling, paying particular attention to research which has established the complication resolution narrative as one type of storytelling. 
Okay, my friends. So you can see the abstract in front of you while I will switch to our chat. And I will ask you, since the since um, in English the first the beginning of a sentence indicates what the rest of the sentence is about, you know, so the beginning is the is the flag. The finding, the first finding is this, the second finding is this, right? So that's how English structures were very clear and, and those flags are right at the start of the sentence. Can you tell me whether there is a focus? So we're examining now this abstract using my terminology of text structure. And I am asking you to tell me whether there is the focus, whether there is a problem, and whether there is a dialogue stage in this abstract. We're looking at it. So do we have the focus and how does it start, if you can say it? We're working together, not in groups, because I don't know how to switch you into groups and so on. So we're making an exception and we're working together as a group, 10 of us. Are we are we are we are we talking to each other or did we just stop talking? Can you guys hear me? Yes, but we hear you, but I think that we are thinking about this. You can't question. think. You have to do it very fast. OK, we, this is our fourth class. There's nothing to think about. Um, Uh, I would like to hear how the how the what what the first words, what are the first words if there is a focus, and what are the first words of the sentence that contains focus? So is there a focus stage, and what are the first words of the sentence? Honestly, um, one of the things. So I'll tell you what's the difference between I I I. What's the difference between Harvard students and, say, regular university students, say, even in Australia? When I watch sometimes the Harvard lectures, the, the professor, the famous professor comes in. Students are prepared. He asks, he gives them tasks like I give you, and they they are prepared for these questions and they have debates and they discuss it. Whereas, uh, be it in Australia or anywhere else, not Harvard, Students sleep because they're not prepared. So sometimes when I don't give you um, um, homework, it doesn't mean that it's time to go shopping. What I mean is um, watch the lecture again, examine the notes. We need to be prepared. So this is today. It's the fourth class. So we're shooting. We're showing what we have learned. Mind you, the problem might be so difficult that you haven't learned much. Maybe it's my problem. Maybe I didn't teach you well. But we need to be a little bit fast. The focus should be right at the start of the paragraph, right? So you need to ask yourself, is it there? Is it orienting us on some on, on some context? Is the abstract orienting us on some context, just like any introduction would? So when you have a story about the about Cinderella, it starts like once upon a time. So we know once upon a time, it's a typical beginning of a of a of a children's story. Then with a um, with a um, grasshopper in the end, we had 
in the field one summer summer's day right so um it located us somewhere are we located in this abstract somewhere is there a focus is it focusing us somewhere is the app is the first sentence of a story of the focus focusing us somewhere or not have to do it fast 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 I think that the, the focus is the first sentence and it starts with uh, for the, the text for the for, for the past eight years. Exactly. We're right there. We're right there, you know, and so, so it's not difficult because it has to be in the if, if the abstract is produced well, then it has to be right at the start, right? The, the, the focusing point is right the first at the right at the beginning and, and the first words. So now we know that we're talking that the context of our story of this abstract is what's happening in Australia. And it's been happening for the last eight years. Now I'll show you something. Um, I'll show you how Lala did that in his PhD. We go to his abstract. Right, and look what he does. The Indonesian government introduced a new Indonesian qualifications framework and the national education standards. Maybe he should have said when. In 2015, the Indonesian government, that would have been better, right? In 2015, the Indonesian government introduced the new Indonesian qualifications framework and the national education standards that together sought to transition higher education from content providers to places that support transformative learning objectives, right? So you place the reader somewhere in the universe, right? And here is the moment when the new policies were put in place. Whereas uh, in this document, We are put in the context of testing, national testing. For the past eight years, this is what Australia does, keeps testing students every two years. Exactly. So we may still look at the se at sentence one, just in case they actually mention the problem there, because sometimes the problem might be also um, uh, included in the first sentence or it will be in the second sentence it's most likely right because abstract has to be short so you don't want the the problem to be you don't want the focus to be seven sentences if a focus takes seven sentences in an academic abstract most likely it's not well written right so when you look now for the problem you have to still examine sentence one and go to sentence two and sentence three and see where, where, how is the problem indicated? So where is the problem here? What do we call problem? Disturbance, right? I call it disturbance because what's being disturbed, right? So some, there's a disturbance, what they indicate, right? So have a look where there is a problem indicated and how they do it. I think I think that the problems is uh, the second sentence and it start with uh, this paper examines. That's it. Is it the same person talking to me? Yes. Well, what is the rest of our students doing? Sleeping? Are they online? Now that's very important. I'm not nasty, but it's very important that all our students talk. You can't hide behind the little picture of a, on the computer, right? This is a this is a tutorial. We're learning, 
right? We're having a discussion and I wish that some students who don't have a clue just said it. OK, so why are some I'll go to chats rather than uh, follow up with a session. I want to know why some students didn't say it. Can, t can one can some of the students who didn't see the problem that tell me why they didn't see it there? Because part of I, when I hear from the same student, then it's like a private tutorial and I don't know how to address your problems because maybe you don't see it and I would like you to tell me why. Actually, you, I don't have any problem because you know that I can correct the question you are asking about. You know, that's the reason why I keep silent here. Because yeah. you can, you, you cannot what? I, I can catch your question that you are asking about. It. You cannot catch it. Yes, yes. Actually, I, I, I'm gonna. I I have tried to find out a question that you are asking about, but okay, I okay. So what we're you. doing now? Yes. We're, we're so, looking. So we're, could you please that make it more clearly about your question? Yeah. Thank you. Can someone else make the question? Uh, uh, exp answer this question. What am I? What am I asking you for? And then you just when we find out the answer that I already clear about your question. Yes, thank you. OK, so we've we've ident so we'll, we're, I taught you for the last three classes the generic structure of a text, right? So which was focus, disturbance, dialogue, development, resolution and the moral. So that's the generic tech, a structure of the text that I taught you so that you can actually see how the text follows, whether it is coherent, whether it actually has all the elements. Um, we've then also used aesthetics to to examine some things, but um, right uh, to see what else is happening in the text. And we'll come back to that today or tomorrow. But anyway, just today we're focusing on the generic structure of the text of all texts, which I suggest all texts have the same generic structure. I've taught it for six for three classes. Uh, which is nine hours, and now I expect that what we will do today is to see whether this generic structure is in this abstract, right? So we're examining if this abstract has the, the, the same structure which I suggested. Why we are doing this, it's because we want to see how good is this structure. Maybe this by matching the abstract with my structure, maybe we can learn something and we'll find out what. OK, we just don't know. So we're, we're at this very moment, we're doing an exercise. Is this abstract constructed according to the generic structure which I suggested that every text Every well designed text should have this structure. So, um, so this paper examines, right? So when it examines something, so that's the beginning. This is this is a good beginning of the problem, right? A good beginning. So the for the past eight years, it really focused us on an issue, right? An issue is well, students are tested. In, students in Australia are being tested, right? Uh, then clearly the paper uh, is examining something. It must have identified some problem. So it's a good introduction to uh, flagging the problem that the paper that follows after this abstract will address. So it's a good beginning, right? This paper examines and let's look at it. So now when I read this sentence of the, di of the, of the problem of the disturbance, and I will read the third sentence. I want you to see it, where is the dialogue stage and how does it start? So this, the, the second sentence goes, this paper examines the way in which the very notion of storytelling and narrative is conceptualized in the NAPLAN. All right, so it clearly identifies that there must be a problem, right? That's why it's examining it. Supporting documentation and its potential negative consequences. 
And then the paper begins by providing a review of the literature on storytelling, paying particular attention to research, which has established the complication resolution narrative as one type of storytelling. Now you don't, all right, take time. We've identified that clearly this paper examines the way in which the very notion of storytelling and, nar and narrative is conceptualized in the NAPLAN that clearly indicates a problem, right? We're focused, this is the problem that we're focusing on. Is there a dialogue, which is, is there a dialogue stage in this abstract, in the first three sentences? Is there a text in this abstract? which tells us something about the problem. So they will be looking at the notion of storytelling and narrative as conceptualized in the NAPLAN supporting documentation and the potential negative consequences of the way this not storytelling and narrative is conceptualized. Right? So they will be doing this. Is there a dialogue stage in this? or this sentence, in these sentences, is there something that is being told about the problem? Because dialogue is like a literature review, something said about the problem itself, about the disturbance. I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy. I too had to think about it, but that's discourse analysis. You read and you think about it. So it's not easy. But it is our 10th hour, so we should know something. What do we know about the problem? So they, they, will, be, they will be examining the notion, the notion, how storytelling and narrative is conceptualized. I so basically the notion is conceptualized in the NAPLAN documents. So I, I, I grammatically I would have written the very notion notions. I would have made it plural because they have storytelling and narrative. So they two genres, right? So I would have made it notions, and I would have said are conceptualized. But that's how they wrote. And very much often in English, native speakers uh, have issues with plural and singular, different ones than, say, Asian students. Asian students don't use plural at all because they forget to write the S at the end or pronounce the S at the end of uh, nouns. But anyway, um, abstracting from that, they will be examining the very notion of storytelling and narrative, how it is conceptualized in NAPLAN supporting document and its potential negative consequences. Is there anything said about the problem? Which is, is there a dialogue? Have we learned anything about the problem? So they're examining this in that. If you were to, and then they say this. If you were to identify dialogue in this abstract, where would you find it? Where do you think there is a dialogue or there isn't any? Well, I gravitate toward the third sentence. 
first sentence, that's an introduction, right? So that's the focus. So I'm a little bit lost. I mean, that's the, a third, the third one, not the first, the third one. Yes. OK. So what I suggest here, the paper begins. What question does it answer? Inside, if someone writes at the beginning, the paper begins. Um, what question in terms of the generic structure of text? What question does this beginning answer? The paper begins this. Or in other words, we could say. So we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this. Right, we did this, then say, then we did that. Then we did that. Right, so they so. So the first sentence is the focus. Then we have a disturbance. The, the disturbance is the way in which the very notion of storytelling and narrative is conceptualized in the NAPLAN supporting documents. And then we have the paper begins. So then we did this, then we did this, then we did that. What structure? What what stage? In the structure of texts. Is about saying what we did. We did this, then we did this, then we did that. Which stage is character characterized by these movements? We did this, we did that, then we did that. All right, let me have a look at chat. Who is brave enough to say, I don't know? The design of research, but which structure in the generic? Which level in the generic structure is, is saying these things that the design of research? Remember, we had focus, disturbance, dialogue, development, resolution, the moral. That's the generic structure of all texts. There's no such a thing like introduction in the beginning. I, I don't want you to use that. I said we had focus, then we had disturbance. I've been teaching this for 10 hours, disturbance. Then we have dialogue. Then we have development. Then we have resolution. Then we have the moral. Right, so that's a six stages of the of, of six stages of the text that each text should address. Each text doesn't matter whether it's a joke, a PhD thesis, or a fable. Doesn't really matter. So the moral story. So from these six levels, whereas in this particular in this particular abstract, we've we've identified the the focus, we've identified the problem. Where's the dialogue? The dialogue is a section in the abstract that should tell us something about the problem. And when we say the paper begins, then it provides, then the final section of the paper presents. Yes, it's a design of the research, but in terms of this generic structure, which of the elements is it? Exactly, it's development. Who said that? No. Is it the teacher, right? Or are you a student? Are you a student? Are you a student yeah. here? 
Okay, yeah, well, you... in a all right. So the uh, is it the I mean, I could have said to you to, to the rest of our students, do you agree with this? But because we don't have time and we're dragging this thing quite slowly, so I just have to say yes. Um, tie on it's correct it's the development the development says well so as a result of all of that those uh, of, of of these issues you know we've identified as a problem as a result you know we, we did this we did this we did this to have a look um to help us identify to what extent it is a problem and what can be done about it so yes it's the development and then then after the development is what the resolution right what are the findings right so the resolution um tells us the findings so what happened right so we've done all of that we we provided the literature review we provided an account look right and and please students noticed that when the paper this when the abstract discuss is at the stage of the development we're looking at the beginning of the sentences and you can recognize that three sentences at least here are about the development the paper begins the paper then provides an account of right and the final section of the paper presents a genre analysis of eight student writing samples right so it says what we do in this paper in order to examine the notion of the narrative and storytelling right so we will be examining and this is how we will do it Right, so, but I still cannot cannot get you guys to find a, the dialogue stage in this pro in this paper, because you cannot have. I mean, you can have it that the academic didn't write the dialogue, but this could indicate a problem that either the academic didn't know how to write an essay, uh, pardon me, an, an abstract properly. And the dialogic stage could be exactly in the literature review that they will provide inside of the paper, right? So that's good. But it could be that the reason that they didn't write the dialogue, it could be that they don't know something and they don't want to go there. So they just dropped it. Right, and that's a critical reading of the paper. That's why this generic structure, which I'm teaching you, is very good because it says all elements have to be there. And notice when they provide the development stage, and they say we will begin with the literature review. Well, that's very interesting. They they know that the literature review is important. But why didn't they, after they said what they will examine, why didn't they tell us something about the problem? Or did they? So they will be examining the notion of storytelling and narrative, how they are in NAPLAN supporting documentations and its potential negative consequences. Do we have here a dialogic stage or not in this abstract? OK, if someone if you guys don't know it, can you can you type it's too hard? Um, can you commit yourself to a response? So I know where you're going. OK, so I just would like you to go to chat and type for me your thoughts. Is there a dialogic stage 
in this abstract between the problem and the development. There should be a dialogue there. Because um, Because when you say something is a problem, you should say something about the problem, right? So that you can actually justify why you're looking at it. OK. I don't think there is. Hi, So just to show you that this is not simple. I actually agree with you. I also don't think there is. So what they say, they will be examining the way in which the notion of they will be looking at the supporting documentation of NAPLAN and specifically. Specifically at this, right? So let me underline that. I hope you can see that underlining. So we find, so basically they do numeracy tests and literacy, right? So that's the focus. The students do testing. And what the, the, the purpose of this paper is to examine. So what we will be doing or what the problem we want to focus on is the notion of storytelling and narrative inside of NAPLAN support documentation. And what we they then then we have this text, right? We have this text, which is really. Interesting. Which is its potential negative consequences. So what we say is we think it's problematic. This this um, this notion of storytelling and narrative in the NAPLAN supporting documents, right? We think it's problematic, has has potential negative consequences. However, however, and this is the discourse analysis, right? However, when you are armed with this generic structure, focus, um, disturbance, dialogue, you ask yourself, well, we have an introduction to the problem. This paper examines, right? So this paper examines, it's, it's a phrase that uh, with which we introduce the problem that the paper will look at. And now we want something to be told about this. So what we're learning that the paper will look at this. So clearly this is the problem, but they say, if they look at and its potential negative consequences, then it only reinforces that this is the problem. But it doesn't tell us much. It's literally, I, I, I'm teaching you abstract thinking. That's what master level, right? This is, this is the court master course. So you're learning abstract thinking. The, the bit of a sentence, that goes from this paper examines to supporting documentation, that sentence and the clause here and its potential negative consequences, they literally are mirroring one another. The, um, the its potential negative consequences is not really telling us anything about the consequences. Are they pedagogic? Are they linguistic? Are they to do with assessment? Assessors don't know how to assess. I mean, what negative consequences? And now with you, I might do one thing. I will just, I, I, in, the, in the PDF file that we're looking at, I will type pedagogue. It could be pedagogy, ped, pedagogies, or it could be anything. So I just type a little bit of the word pedagogy just a uh, three quarter of the word. And now see whether they actually have.
such a conclusions has, right? So they do talk about pedagogy. But not much. This is just the title above. And at the end, notice. They only mention it may have implication. This is the conclusion, right? Notice this is the conclusion and they say and. The paper doesn't look at pedagogy at all. It suggests that if there is a problem, it may have. Implications for pedagogy, it suggests, but doesn't actually look at pedagogy. Right? It doesn't look at pedagogy. It the only time when we had the word pedagogy in this paper was basically in the title. And twice they said that the inconsistencies that they found may have implications for literacy pedagogy, but they don't know. Because they didn't examine the pedagogy. So it's very interesting for me as a pedagogue, right? I teach teachers how to teach literacy. This is what I'm doing with you. I'm teaching you English literacy. You can call it discourse analysis, call it whatever you want. I teach you discourse literacy. Uh, I teach you English literacy, which is how to write and how to read. That's what discourse analysis is about techniques and tools for reading and writing. And notice that they didn't commit themselves to say. What consequences? So basically what they are saying is we. I will now translate it. We as linguists think. That there might be problems in which Naplan looks at the concept. Of, of storytelling and narrative we as linguists think. And it may matter to you as pedagogues or as people who assess students' writing. But we don't know. Right? So the paper is really written from the perspective of linguistics. It's not written from the perspective of pedagogy. And it's coming clear here, right at the start. You may not see it because you haven't read the paper, but when you just look at the stage of the problem and dialogue, right, you see the dialogue is either not present, which I agree, I don't see here the dialogue. So it's either not present or it's nothing really said about it. They just said, oh, well, you know, uh, the notion of storytelling is problematic in that we think that it might be problematic. Well, right. But why is it problematic? Tell us, tell us about the significance of your paper. They're not saying anything. They're not saying whom it can help. Right, so it's very little, nothing, there's nothing, uh, it's non-committal non-committal, so they don't commit themselves to pedagogy or anything or to uh, techniques of assessment, nothing. They just they don't even define their own perspective. I said it's a linguistic perspective because I've read the paper, but they don't even say it. It's written from the perspective of of linguistics alone. Right. That. So that's interesting, so we can see it right here. Um, why is it important? It's for you to see what people don't say, right? So when we apply the generic structure of text to this abstract, we instantly can see, or instantly, as our analysis shows, that we actually haven't learned anything about the perspective from which they look at the, at the problem, right? They say that there could be a problem with the way with the supporting documentation, there could be a problem, but they don't say from which perspective they will be talking about the problem. That's not humble. 
if you do not define your perspective from which you discuss the problem, then you're saying that your perspective is universal. I see it all, I know it all. And therefore, there's only one way to talk about this problem. Right, so here it is, it comes out. Uh, then we agree that the development stage is nicely indicated. So these people will uh, uh, write well, right? They start very nicely. Their focus is beautifully indicated. Their problem is beautifully indicated. The dialogic stage of the paper is beautifully hidden, right? It's hidden, they hid it away. They knew they had to say something. They don't know what to say. They don't want to commit themselves. They have no pedagogy. That's why they don't say anything. Uh, but they want the paper to help to help teachers. So they don't want to say that they talk only from the linguistic perspective. They just want to have an impact on teachers. So they say, well, you know, we're discussing important things here, but they don't say anything about pedagogy. They don't claim that they only look at it from the perspective of linguistics. Right, so it may not have any relevance to teachers. Linguistics is on the left, pedagogy is on the right, and the theory of teaching is to meet the two if there is a way. But not, it doesn't mean that teaching should follow linguistics. Right? Linguistics is a huge discipline. And teach students in school have little heads. You can't teach students to be doctoral scholars in linguistics, right? And these people know that. That's why they hid their perspective from which they will be examining texts. That's my claim. But they, so, so they write well and they knew how to hide it. They didn't provide or they didn't identify the perspective from which they look at the problem. That's why the dialogue is invisible. I mean, to say that there might be a problem, yeah. But how do you know that? What tool helps you to do that? They don't say. Right, so then they say what they've done. They've done this, they've done that. Then beautifully, so these are. this is a developmental stage. Now look at the way how they started the resolution. Drawing on these findings, this paper argues. Right, so it's a beautiful way to indicate that the developmental stage or development stage of this abstract has finished. Now we move to the next move uh, stage, which is the resolution. Right, which is resolution, beautifully indicated drawing on these findings. So you need to learn a little bit uh, these moves, you know, contextualize, tell us what the problem is, tell us something about the problem, the perspective that helps you look at this problem, then tell us what you did, then tell us, uh, so what, right? So you've got, um, oh, you have here findings, right? So it's a resolution. I did it in yellow, uh, in green. You can see it's underlined, sorry. So that's the resolution. That's a finding. Our oh, finding is here, pardon me. Finding is here. And finding is here. Sorry, I just ran too fast. So these are, these are the findings. The analysis found and the analysis also found, right? So these are the resolutions. So what happened? I mean, so what was found, pardon me. And now we have... Um, Here, the sentence drawing on these findings, the paper argues that various inconsistencies and incons inconsistencies and points of apparent confusion in these comments and gradings can be taken as evidence that other subtypes of storytelling are being inappropriately devalued and that ultimately there is a lack of understanding in the nature. I would still say it's a finding, right? So um, it's a one finding, second finding, 
and just basically a concluding finding. It's still a finding, so it's still the resolution stage. And now the moral, so what? Right, the moral is here. By the way of conclusion, beautifully indicated. So the moral is beautifully indicated. By the way of conclusion, we think that this is, this and this is the best way to proceed in the future. Right, by the way of conclusion, beautiful way. So you can see that these people are excellent writers. They use beautiful, they know that the most important element of the sentence is right at the start and they indicate movements in their abstract from one stage to the next beautifully right with the phrases at the start of those stages for the past eight years all this paper examines and the developmental development stage the paper begins with this provides this the final section does this now the findings which is the resolution the analysis found the analysis also found beautiful Re this, the re resolution stages. So, um, um, so what are the findings? What happened as a result? Right. So you've done all of that. So what happened as a result? Well, this happened. We found this and we found that. And then we also decided to think that. Right, that there could be other, there will be more problems. So we, we found this problem, we found this problem, and we think that there could be more problems. So the moral of the stories, so they don't say the words the moral of the stories, but they, but they now use similar words and they say by the way of conclude, by way of conclusion, by way of, of con so they now indicate we move now to the concluding remarks, which is, where to from here, which is the moral of the story. So what's the what's the lesson out of all of that? Right. So the moral is the lesson of a story and they indicate it's time for me for us to tell you the lesson. What's the lesson of all of that? And they say this paper reflects on this and then they write what's the lesson? What makes a good story and so on. So. I have run with you through the analysis of this abstract written by excellent um, linguists. I expect that when you start producing your assignment for me, the 500 word assignment, that you actually either return to the video recording of this, of this discussion or you use this abstract as, as a structure that may help you write and write your abstract and write nice uh, uh, and, and use these indicators here to help you in your text to mark the shifts from one stage of the abstract to the next, right? So you don't say silly things like this paper, um, this paper, or I don't know. I mean, I will show you some silly abstract as well. Badly written, also by a famous linguist, a professor. Well, she's is she a linguist? She's not. She's a pedagogue, actually. But she is a professor. She's famous. But sometimes when you're too famous, sometimes you get sloppy and things go wrong. So I'll show you one that really starts badly. After the break, I'll show you. But the important is, thing is, is not to write sloppy. So say in this paper we do this and from the when you write the focus then you miss the problem you just say what you did right so no problem very often in abstracts the problem is not mentioned right the dialogue stage is not mentioned these things sometimes disappear so people write abstracts and it's amazing the whole paper is about the problem and yet in the abstract, they don't include the problem. They just go on and tell us what they did. Like, the question is, why the heck did you do it? Why did you Why did you do this and this and that and that? Right? You have to justify it. And the way to justify it is before you tell us how the paper developed, tell us why. So that we can actually assess whether your methodology, your design, and your discussion is on the point. 
So here, what we learned from this examination of this abstract is that yes, we had some problem indicators, but we have no way of judging, at least now, after we've read the abstract, if the way they designed their discussion or their analysis is useful, because we don't know what it has to do. I mean, the, we don't know the perspective that makes this design relevant because they didn't define their perspective. And we also know that there could be a problem because in the title, when you look, they talk pedagogy. And yet, throughout the paper, when we look at we looked for the word pedagogy, we, we couldn't find it in ways in places other than the title. And twice they said that maybe our analysis may have some implications for pedagogy, but they didn't go into it. So clearly, clearly they assume the link but they don't argue it, right? They don't argue it, and there is no pedagogic perspective on the concept of storytelling provided. In fact, they hid the perspective from which they will be analyzing the concept of storytelling and narrative. They hid it. They may argue if, if these two scholars said, in our class, they may argue it's obvious there's only one perspective, linguistic perspective. I don't know. There is semiotic perspective. There is a neuroscience perspective. There is a pedagogic perspective. I don't know. There might be more. And that's why you need to define your position. It's in research. It's called you must define your I, your position. Um, you must define your framework from which you look at the problem. So if the problem is how Naplan looks at the concept of storytelling, so define your I, define your position from which you look at it. Do not turn yourself into God because you ain't one. Well, you might think you are, but you aren't in terms of the audience, right? In, the, in terms of the readers. I mean, we, we, I'm very happy to say that everybody is a god, but it changes nothing. I still need to hear in the abstract from which perspective you will be examining the concept of storytelling and narrative, especially, especially since you are making a claim that it may have a relevance to pedagogy. So what pedagogy? What does the word pedagogy in your title have to do with your analysis? Say it. You didn't say it. I know this paper will have a problem somewhere. And that's how you can take this paper and turn it into another article where you will actually criticize this paper. Right? So someone like me is doing this. And I know that it's important to do it because they claim pedagogy, but the word pedagogy is not appearing in the abstract and not telling us why the way they talk about, sto the, uh, about storytelling and narrative is relevant to pedagogy, right? Right here. And it's potential negative pedagogy consequences. Why didn't they say pedagogy consequences? As look from the perspective of what approach? 